Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everyone. Today we're going to be doing a review for the new Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Battlemaster Slitherfang. This is War for Cybertron Earthrise number 13. Slitherfang is the first and only new mold Battlemaster in the second wave. He's paired along with a reissue of Rung from Siege. And he also holds the honor of being the first Battlemaster to not be a Decepticon or Autobot, but he's actually rather part of the Quintesson faction. Uh, don't know if that'll play into fiction at all, but officially he's aligned with them. So, you know, attaching him to a Alicon or something when those come out will be pretty fitting. But I will say based on his color scheme, you'd really think this guy was a Decepticon. He's got the token black and purple all over him. So if you know my reviews, you know how this goes. We're gonna take a look at the toys packaging. We'll open it up, see the instructions. Uh, we'll look at his little map piece that's there on the back that you might be able to make out right now. And then we'll see Slew the Fang himself in both his Cobra and Shield slash ramp modes. I'll demonstrate his airlock compatibility. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So like I said, Slitherfang is part of the Quintesson faction, and you can see that right here. It's barely visible. It's this like creepy skull-like symbol. And then he's got this really, really nice looking artwork on the front here that just really pops. Uh, makes him look a little bigger than it should, but overall it really works. Uh, got some explosions, some buildings in the background. So you can see him along with his fire blast effect right there. Turn it around, you get the renders, which the renders give him kind of a glowing quality. You can see the Cobra mode here. This is his ramp mode, which is attached to what appears to be Airwave from the second deluxe wave, which uh, is not generally out here in the US yet. It takes five steps to transform, and that's about it. Bunch of legal mumbo jumbo, warnings, or code, usual. All right, let's open this guy up. All right, here's everything that comes inside. Let's see, Slitherfang himself, Blast Effect. Here's the map piece, which you can see right here. Doesn't show off too much. Looks like part of a planet, and then one of those travel trails, which we learned from uh, Scorpinox map piece that these are all indicative of different factions or means of you know getting around the universe. So it's good to know. Looks like we got two different ones here, and then. You have his instructions, which are all folded up. Come on. I have to do them like this. So here's the thing on the front. There's the Quintesson fashion symbol. This shows you how to attach his blast effect. And then this shows you how to transform him into his shield or ramp mode. So that's how that works. And uh, let's see, what is this? Oh, yeah. So, basically, if you want to convert him from a shield to a ramp, you have to back him out a bit and flip his little peg in, which makes sense. And then this shows him connected to Airwave. Now, a closer look at Slitherfang. You can see he's just this cobra. Uh, he's got what look like treads on the bottom part, which kind of makes sense. You a mechanical snake, treads would be one way for it to get around, so that's kind of cool. His little handle serves as the tip of his tail. And he's pretty articulated. He can bend this way. He can turn a little mushroom peg. This can bend forward. And then his head can go up and down. And has a stopping point right here. It can't go down any further than that. And I believe the mouth opens, right? Or doesn't it? No, it doesn't. No. Well, the artwork makes it, makes it look like it does, but now it's all molded one piece. That's a shame. It'd be nice if his mouth opened. Oh well. See, he's got a five millimeter hole there in the chin. And uh, let's see, in the back, he's got nice painted detail, which kind of doubles as like road detailing, but also like a cobra pattern. So that's very neat. And he's got the two hard points on him. You can attach this blast effect to, and it's pretty cool. Nice, unique shape. It's got this one long spike going up here. On mine, this spike is bent up a little bit. I'm not sure how common of an occurrence that is. And it's not too noticeable, but kind of annoying. So you can attach it on his front, like the instructions show, or you can place it on his back too, which will come in handy more for the uh, shield and ramp modes. So overall, pretty cool looking. 
and uh, I just I like the fact that we're you know they're trying new things instead of all just being little humanoid robots. They already did one animal-based battle master with the uh, Taraxodon mold, and you could kind of sort of count Smashdown, though he's more of a Minotaur than an animal, so he's still humanoid. But I just I do like them experimenting and doing things a little differently to help differentiate these toys and mix things up. And I am willing to bet. I, I will make the wager now that this toy will see at least one read echo before they're done with this mold. Because I just I don't see them coming up with this new mold for a snake based battle master and then them just you know discard it afterwards. Alright, so now for the transformation, we're gonna do the shield mode first. So you just take Slither Fang, lift the head up, grab this piece right here, which is part of a ramp. That just goes all the way up too. And you flip the tail upwards like this. And you're gonna bring the tip of it kind of all the way through to where it's sticking out like a handle like that. And you just bring this up against his chin here. And you can see there's tabs that go into these slots. So you just straighten it out, push it on, get everything nice and straight, and that's it. He forms this pretty decent looking little black and purple shield. Put the blast effect on it if you want to. Show that he's blocking some sort of damage there. And I like it. I love the texturing on this. Okay, here I'm using Select's exhaust to show this guy off and show you just how the shield attaches to other bots. And it works pretty well as some sort of blast shield. Sticks out a little far from forearm but it's not a big deal and it just works out pretty well again this guy's not a Decepticon but I don't have any Quintesson aligned figures to you know pair him up with so we're gonna go with exhaust right now though actually exhaust isn't technically a Decepticon either he's actually the first toy from that mercenaries faction so cool beans cool beans now to get this guy from shield to ramp the instructions had you go and you know take this whole piece off and all that which I don't know why, because here you go, ready? Boom, it's ramp now. Literally achieves the same thing that the, all those extra steps did, so I don't know why they went that route. Uh, whatever makes them happy, I guess, right? So as a ramp, he can connect to any airlock connection on any toy that supports it. In this case, we're gonna bring out another Selects toy, and this is Grease Pit. Came out alongside a little exhaust there. And we're gonna go ahead, let's attach him to this front area here. Like a double front ramp, I like that. Kind of a tight connection. And once you get it on, here it is. Now, because of all his undercarriage, he doesn't function well as like an off ramp. Like, you know, say this one does, it goes all the way to the ground. Because those treads just really get in the way, I guess. Let's try reversing him, seeing if that helps much. Uh, not so much. <laughs> Doesn't make any big difference. So he's going to function best as just a straight level road or a ramp that's connected to like two different points, like an elevated ramp. Uh, so that's a little disappointing that he can't really achieve something a little more adaptable. And I think that pretty much does it for old Slither Fang here. Pretty simple toy, so, you know, this is a pretty simple review. Not uh, a whole lot to talk about here. But I will say, he's probably my favorite new battle master to come out of Earth and Rise. Like, sound barrier's okay, though he's extremely back heavy, doesn't stand up well. And is, I think, a lazier transformation overall. You basically just flip his back panel down. Slither Fang I find much more interesting. I mean, he's a evil purple snake, turns into a shield, becomes part of a base. It works. And he's a Quintesson, or, you know, Quintesson aligned, which is a new thing. So, of course, that's exciting. And like I said, unfortunately, there aren't any other Quintesson toys out right now to review alongside him. So I'm sure we'll see him pop up again as those finally get released. Uh, the Wave 2 Deluxes are just seeing a really massive delay in their release. And 
if certain details are to be believed, the Quintesson judge himself has actually been pushed back to wave three, which is very disappointing because I was looking forward to more new figures in wave two, but oh well, what do you do? So this guy should be showing up in stores right around this time, probably targets. Uh, this one I personally got from Entertainment Earth, though there was all sorts of issues getting this thing shipped to me and it took like two weeks. So that, that's really annoying. This along with his wave mate run. But I will say this guy was definitely worth the wait because he is just a very cool little battle master. Though of course the whole shield thing is gonna get old by the end of Earth Rise because I think all of the new mold battle masters are shields. So they'll all essentially turn into rectangles. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Maybe like wave four will surprise us and we'll get something a little different, but they might just all be ramps and shields. So naturally, I think this guy is an easy buy for the six or seven dollar price point. But now I want to know what do you think? Are you interested in Slitherfang? Do you plan on picking him up? Do you have him already? Do you like him? Are you all on board for the idea of animal-based battle masters, or do you prefer them more humanoid? Any and all responses are always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss a like, let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this quick little review of the new battle master, Slitherfang. And with all that said, I will see you next time.